My topic tonight is future religion. What might a religion of the future look like? And I'll begin with an observation that religion diverges and fragments, but science converges. A few centuries ago, there were alchemists trying to turn lead into gold. I believe Isaac Newton dabbled in alchemy. Alchemists had different contradictory views about how to do it. But eventually, alchemy became chemistry. Chemistry converges to one truth, one reality. If you ask the chemist in Italy, Iran, or India what's going to happen if you mix two certain chemicals, you'll get the same answer. Religion, on the other hand, has been around for thousands of years and diverges. If you're in Italy, Iran, or India, and you ask what happens after death, or how do I get to heaven, you will get different answers. I want to focus more in depth on the first point. Religion diverges. It fragments. There's several uh, Jewish groups. Christianity. This seems to say that Christianity was monolithic and united and only divided well here in uh, the, the great schism we've taught, spoken about when uh, Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy split. Here's the Protestant Reformation. But this here isn't exactly accurate. I read a book some years ago, this book, and it talked about how there were different Christianities. And when Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, then orthodoxy began to be enforced, and other types of Christianity were banned, declared heretical, suppressed. And at that time, the Bible was compiled. There were many writings, and it was decided which ones were officially in the Bible and which ones were not. But at any rate, even if we grant this, religion has certainly fragmented. There's no doubt about that. And today, just looking at Christianity, uh, we have various Protestant denominations and over 200 of them. And also, I want to make the point that denomination here is, well, denomination has two meanings. One is an autonomous branch of a Christian church, fine. But denomination also suggests something that is not true, although many people would like to believe it. In terms of money, denomination refers to the denomination of money. And all of these denominations are valid money. I can pay a bill using $10 bills, $20 bills, $50 bills. It doesn't matter. But in Christianity, some quote, denominations, deny the validity of other denominations. They say, we will get you to heaven, but if you follow those denominations, you're in need of salvation. I believe Baptists say that about uh, Catholics and Mormons, for instance. I spoke about that in this video clip and in this one too. So I won't go into it again. So religions fragment. They diverge. Science, on the other hand, converges, as I mentioned. If you go to Italy, Iran, or India, and you ask the chemist what's going to happen if you mix two chemicals, you'll get the same answer. Chemistry, apparently, has converged to a single objective truth which accurately describes the universe, at least the part of the universe that chemistry talks about. And the proof that science, well, first of all, there's only one reality. So if you're not converging, you're probably not talking about reality, but separate fictions. Science's way of knowing, apparently, reveals to us that single reality. And the proof of that is right in front of you. If you're watching on a monitor, attached to a computer, or on a television, you are seeing science prove itself right in front of your eyes. Science describes, uh, the science of aeronaut dynamics describes how to design planes, as well as other sciences too, structural. And the planes fly. Science proves itself daily that it is in contact with reality, that what it designed works. So in Italy, Iran, and India, you don't have Italian chemistry and Iranian chemistry and Indian chemistry. You have chemistry. Chemistry has converged to reality. But in those countries, you do have different views of the afterlife and how to live this life. After thousands of years, religions not only have failed to converge, they've diverged. They give us contradictory views of reality. So, 
Religion diverges. It fails to discover and reveal reality. Why? Well, I believe it goes back to what's called epistemological methods in philosophy. Otherwise, you can think of them as ways of knowing. How do you decide what is true? Because how you decide what is true may be as important as what you decide is true. And the idea here is religion's way of knowing is scripture and authority. Something is deemed true because it's written in a scripture or because someone like Jesus or Krishna or Muhammad or whoever said it. And typically what they said was written down if they themselves didn't write it down. And that's how religion decides what's true. And it's a, it's a, it's a way, well, first of all, there's no way to reconcile these different scriptures. If one scripture says Jesus is God and another scripture says Jesus is not, well, what can you do? You've got two different scriptures and the followers are never going to agree. Uh, so religion's way of knowing by deciding what's true based on scripture's authority evidently does not reveal reality. It's had thousands of years and it's gone in the other direction. More and more different religious groups more and more different denominations. Well, some people say, well, just have faith. That's not good enough. Isn't it a negation of faith to live in a vast and ancient universe, but construct a little mental ghetto where we feel safe among like-minded people, where we don't look at the obvious facts and say, I'll just put that all in my mind and I'll just believe. Isn't that the opposite of faith? Now, I, I got into that point more in these two clips, if you want to. Uh, if you're interested. Now, so what would a future religion be like? Well, of course, religions could just continue to exist uh, as they are. Um, we, have, uh, Christ, uh, we have Judaism, and then Christianity comes with a new scripture, and Islam comes with a new scripture, and the Book of Mormon comes with a new scripture, and even Scientologists. And we could continue with this way of knowing where we just get a scripture, follow it, and a new religion is born. But here is something I read a long time ago which impressed me. It uh, was written by a man named Alan Watts, who was a philosopher in the 60s and before and after. And he said, we've been accustomed to compartmentalization of science and religion. The idea is on Sunday we say one thing and then we go back to the world and we live in an entirely different way. And he believed it must be replaced by a view which is neither religious or scientific, but simply our view of the world. So, how could that be done? Well, one obvious way to advance religion is to give it a way of knowing that is something like science's way of knowing, which is obviously a superior way of knowing, because in the sciences, anyway, it puts us in contact with reality. But how to apply something like the sciences, science's way of knowing, scientists, science's epistemological method to religion and to the question of values is a very, very difficult question. And I don't have all the answers. I'm not sure I have hardly any answers. But first of all, raising the question is a first step. And also we have to realize that we have inherited the work of centuries in chemistry, math, physics. Thousands of people working for hundreds and even thousands of years have gathered the knowledge that we use every day. And many of them failed and went up a lot of blind alleys before they found the truth. And maybe that's what has to be done in this case. So maybe how to develop a better way of knowing for religion may take a very, very, very long time. But if we begin, maybe future generations will thank us. Now, in the past, one of the functions of religions was to elevate humanity, to hold up an ideal of love, concern for neighbor, peace, charity, and other virtues. And in a way, we have evolved. I put the word evolved in quotes because I'm using it in a colloquial sense. Evolution doesn't necessarily evolve to greater and greater, quote, progress, but I'm using it in a colloquial sense. 
So at one time, Roman citizens watched slaughter for sport in the Colosseum. They actually went there to see human beings tortured and torn to pieces. Uh, U.S. citizens once helped, held slaves. Today, we've evolved around, beyond such behaviors. Now, of course, the religious ideal wasn't flawless, and I talked about that in this video clip. But religion does offer, in its, in, in its best sense, religion offers an ideal beyond wealth, power, and fame. And perhaps a higher idea of, of humanity is what is sorely lacking in today's popular media. What idea do we give to people, to young children, to, to younger adults, about what is worth accomplishing in the world? The popular media, I think, emphasizes wealth, power, fame. So, we've made a lot of scientific progress, but has humanity evo itself evolved over the past few centuries? I don't know. But might not a purer, truer religion help us evolve further? A religion that has a more advanced, more su a superior epistemological method, a superior way of knowing. Would a superior epistemolog epistemology apply to religion and spiritual values and questions of values yield a superior religion and eventually elevate, elevate humanity further? Possibly. Thank you.